Today I will not exactly be looking at the latest CPU coolers out there, but more so living legends, in fact two of them. The Noctua NHD15, the Chromex Black version of it, and then the stripped down variant of it, the NHD15S, also Chromex Black. What I'm mainly interested in in today's test is to determine whether an NHD15 or NHD15S for that matter is still to be considered exemplary or if this legendary air cooler perhaps is already a bit outdated. As a matter of fact, I can tell you right off the bat that I have mixed feelings about this. A healthy mix of both exemplary and outdated applies here. But why? You'll find out in the course of this video and will be able to tell with your own eyes. But first, a few words regarding pricing. The Chrome X Black version, basically the full version NHD15, currently goes for like 120 US dollars, while the NHD15S can be had for about 105 to 110 dollars. So it's 10 dollars less, give or take. I would like to make it clear right from the start that the only real difference between these two cooler models is that the NHD15S only comes with one fan, whereas the NHD15 comes equipped with two. Oh, and by the way, a big thanks goes out to Chris, aka Krumshi, because he's the one that actually sent me this cooler along with an additional fan, all part of a huge mega care package. As far as what comes included, pretty much everything you'd come to expect and need. At this point, I'd also like to thank Noctua for the swift and good customer service. They delivered extra fan clips quickly and free of charge. First of all, let me praise the excellent build quality both of the heatsink and fans. The dual tower heatsink and the Chromex black version sure does look gorgeous and is nicely coated in black. In terms of the shape and the overall construction, the NHD15, as legendary as it may be, is not asymmetrical. It is therefore more of a classic design we're dealing with, which in the worst case could lead to a few clearance issues with slightly higher memory modules. The heatsink itself does have cutouts to allow for high profile RAM, but the fan would have to be moved further up, something that's not so visually appealing these days. We see six heat pipes on here, along with a nickel plated copper base. The fans are very easy and quick to attach to the heatsink. The renowned NFA15 PWM fans also have rubberized fan corners to minimize vibrations as much as possible. I'd also like to point out that we are dealing with the very durable SSO2 bearing. What's special about Noctua coolers is not only their excellent backwards compatibility with older CPU sockets, but also the fact you can often request free mounting kits or brackets for future sockets and platforms for free. Therefore, obviously, the latest sockets are undoubtedly supported. What I haven't mentioned yet is that Noctua also includes low noise cables to physically lower the fan speed for even quieter operation, at the expense of performance, of course. The installation on both my AM4 and LJ1700 test systems went smoothly, as you would expect from Noctua, to be honest. However, I have to criticize exactly what I mentioned earlier before. Even with my Kingston Fury Beast RGB RAM that is slightly higher, I was forced to move the first fan up a bit. While that shouldn't have a major impact on the cooling performance, the overall appearance does suffer, at least in my opinion. That would definitely be a deal breaker for me in 2024, unless you go with nice low profile RAM, which should be perfectly fine then. With the slimmed down NHD15S, you obviously don't run into any of such clearance issues, since only a single fan is used and is sandwiched in between those towers anyway. That makes the question all the more interesting for me as to how much cooling performance is lost once the second fan of the NHD15 is removed, effectively turning it into an NHD15S. First, a fairly simple test with the AMD Ryzen 7 3800X, then one with the toasty Intel Core i9 13900K, which however runs within the specified power limit of 253 watts. Noise levels. Contrary to what I would have expected, the NHD15 is not one of the quietest CPU coolers, unless the low noise cables are used. The full NHD15 package, with two fans running at their max speed, measure in at 49 decibels. Once I've removed the one outer fan, it becomes an NHD15S, and I then measure 47 decibels, noticeably quieter but still clearly audible. 
temperatures at max fan speed with the AMD 3800X. Here the 3800X CPU obviously appears to be the limiting factor when it comes to being able to clearly show differences between those individual cooling solutions. The NHD15 and NHD15S only differ by a single degree Celsius. We therefore need to test with a hotter, toastier beast. Temperatures at max fan speed with the Intel 13900K. Starting with the Prime95 stress test. Here it becomes clear how well Noctua's legend actually performs. No wonder that this cooler seems to be known for being a legend for so many years. It clearly outperformed not only a few other air coolers, but also one or the other AIO liquid cooler. Only those Arctic liquid freezer AIOs still represent tough competition while costing noticeably less than Noctua's air cooler. But I am pleasantly surprised that the NHD15S is not far behind the D15. I only measured a difference of 3 degrees Celsius, which even puts it ahead of many other cooling solutions. If things get really toasty by increasing the CPU load, by firing up heavy AVX loads in Cinebench 2024, a few of those AIO liquid coolers now start catching up. The two Noctua coolers are holding up well regardless. Here the NHD15 and D15S are only 2 degrees Celsius apart. But these were all tests at max fan speed, which means it's time to carry out more realistic tests. Temperatures at a fixed 40 decibels. We are looking at Prime95 results again. Unsurprisingly, the two Arctic cooling solutions are still in the lead. While being distanced slightly, today's Nocto coolers do fairly well. When throttling the fans to 40 decibels, the NHD15 and D15S are only 1 degree Celsius apart, which is not much. In any case, it becomes clear what extraordinarily good cooling performance these Noctua coolers bring to the table. I did not expect that. If we now go ahead and repeat the test with Sunbench 2024, lots of coolers start sweating. Nonetheless, the majority of which still holds up fairly well. However, it's super obvious that with quite aggressive AVX loads, these Noctua coolers are faced with a bit of a challenge. It is important to remember that AIO liquid coolers tend to have a little more headroom, one could say. But here too, the NHD15 and D15S are only 2 degrees Celsius apart from each other. Conclusion To me it's clear that both the Noctua NHD15 and the slimmed down NHD15S are still very competitive, at least in terms of cooling performance. Aesthetically, the coolers in the Chromex Black version also make a very modern solid impression. It's just that the NHD15 with two fans no longer offers the greatest compatibility with taller RAM modules by today's standards. What can also be seen from my tests is that the NHD15S is not really that far behind the NHD15 in terms of cooling performance. Keep in mind, the NHD15S does not come with a second fan. So there's no need to fear any memory clearance issues with that one. Well, there's always the option to simply move the fan up a little on the NHD15 if you need to. If you don't mind, that is. In terms of price, both the NHD15 and NHD15S and the Chromex Black versions are, needless to say, not exactly super affordable and can cost more than a comparable AIO liquid cooler. There are of course pros and cons for every approach. There are people who prefer liquid coolers, others swear by air coolers. Noctua's NHD15 and NHD15S are undoubtedly long-lasting, high-performance CPU coolers that are still on top of their game, still challenging competitors, even AIO liquid coolers. Both models presented today therefore are worth recommending, even though I would have liked seeing a more visually appealing implementation when tall RAM heatsinks interfere with the NHD15. What's your all-time favorite Noctua cooler? Have you ever used the legendary NHD15? Would you consider it outdated in terms of design by today's standards? If you enjoyed the video, I'd greatly appreciate a like, and if you didn't, just leave a dislike. With that being said, thank you so much for watching, and until the next one.